Hi everybody. It's been a while since my last video on the rapture. Before I start, I would like to welcome my new subscribers and quickly point out two things. I now have the possibility to make community posts. Maybe many of you don't know that those exist. You find them under the community tab. I have already posted a few things, so if you're interested, you might want to check those out. I find this is a good way to stay in contact and fellowship also between videos. The second thing is that there exists a fellowship group for my subscribers who do not have any fellowship with Grace Believers. If you are interested in joining, email me for the details. You'll find my email address under the About tab. So today we're going to have a look at what the Tribulation period, or better, Daniel's 70th week, is really about. But before we do, I would like to cover one last aspect regarding what I said last time. Could the church not be kept in the tribulation? In Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said to Peter that upon the rock, which is he himself, Christ, he would build his church and that the gates of Hades would not overpower it. So, doesn't that sound like the church could supernaturally be kept in it? Well, let's have a look at how the Antichrist, the rider on the white horse, is characterized. In Revelation 6, it says he went out conquering and to conquer. He will definitely succeed because it says a crown was given to him. The word here for crown is Stephanos, which is a victor's crown, a wreath, like those that back then were given to winners in athletic games. And in Revelation 13, verse 7, it says about him, It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. Clearly, he will overcome the saints. They will not be kept in the tribulation. The vast majority will die for their faith. This time is different because in it, the Antichrist is given authority. We also get a clue as to who it is that he will overcome. It does not say church here. The word church doesn't occur after chapter 4, the rapture. Why is that? Because the church is no longer on earth from that time on. After the picture of the rapture, John sees a door open in heaven and hears a voice that says, come up here. From that time on, the word church isn't used anymore, only the saints. This is a clue for the fact that what we are dealing with here is another group of believers. Because of the word saints here, they are oftentimes referred to as tribulation saints. Those that come to faith during the tribulation to be distinguished from the church age believers who are raptured prior to it. But now let us get to the question regarding the purpose of the tribulation and which groups are actually in it. What you will oftentimes discover when people tell you how they feel about this topic, and that's how it must be viewed because it is not a conclusion they have arrived at by actually studying the scriptures, is that they give you all kinds of reasons as to why they believe that we must go through it. The whole basis for discussion is wrong to begin with because, as we will see, the church is not among the groups that will find themselves in Daniel's 70th week. People who argue this way look at everything through the lens of the church as if, from Jesus' birth onward, all the rest of the Bible was about the church only. This is not the case. While this new entity, the church, came into existence at Pentecost and was grafted in the olive tree, while at the same time Israel as a branch was broken off, one must note two important points. The first is, the breaking off of Israel and the grafting in of the church is only temporary. This will be reversed when the church's rule and ministry here on earth is over with. Israel will be grafted back in. We read that in Romans 9 through 11. The second point is, 
Jesus is the Savior of the whole world, but he is also the Messiah of Israel. And then there is this new entity, the Church, consisting of everybody who believes on him, Jew or Gentile. You cannot view the rapture as an isolated event in empty space. It is actually intertwined with God's program with Israel. While we have just seen that God either deals with Israel or the Church at a given period in history, not simultaneously with the two of them, it is important to sort the period of Daniel's 70th week into this pattern. It is a new dispensation and can either have to do with the one group or the other. There is no way one can come to a clear picture regarding end times prophecy by the study of the New Testament only. And yet that is what many Christians are doing and it is the reason why they get confused. If you do that, the tribulation period simply seems to be a period of intense judgment from God after which he finally brings in the kingdom. So people try to figure out how the church fits in there. They either think that this is a time where they will have to prove their faithfulness to the Lord and that its purpose with regard to the church is to get purified through suffering. Those who do not want to suffer quite as much become preppers. Or they get so scared by the thought of having to go through it that they try to avoid the topic at all costs. I know somebody who said to me, I believe that all that's written in the book of Revelation is going to come to pass, but I am praying against this happening during my lifetime. Let us have a look now who the tribulation period is actually for. In Jeremiah 30 verse 7 it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So here we learn that it is a time of trouble that has to do with Jacob, that is, the nation of Israel. And as I pointed out above, God either deals with Israel or the Gentiles. So what we see here is a shift back from the focus on the church and onto Israel. There is a reason, however, for God not saying the time of Israel's trouble. I go into detail about this in my video, The Twofold Purpose of the Tribulation. You might want to check it out if you haven't yet. It's in my eschatology playlist. Let me briefly point out here as well though, Jacob, before becoming Israel, relied on his own strength. Then he wrestled with God. This is what the 70th week is, Jacob coming to the end of the rope until finally he will understand that his strength is in the Messiah alone. The Messiah who had already come. In Daniel 12 verse 7 we read what the purpose of the tribulation, of which Jacob wrestling with God was a picture, is. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. This is what it is mainly about, the shattering of Jacob's own strength. Only when Jacob has become Israel will they call out to him whom they have pierced. This is found in Zechariah 12 verse 10. God can only use Israel in the millennium, not Jacob. In order to understand the purpose of the tribulation period, one must go to chapter 9 of Daniel. There we find the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years. I will not go into great detail here, David Benjamin has recently started an in-depth study of this passage, so please go over to his channel to get a grasp on this vitally important piece of prophecy. I'll link the videos in the description box. As I said, I personally will not do that here on my channel, but I do want to give you a very brief summary of it. It will most likely leave a number of questions unanswered if you're not familiar with it, but it's absolutely vital for the understanding of the tribulation and therefore I'll have to touch it here as well. At least I'll do a quick overview. For time reasons I will not be going into the background here, but jump right in. In verse 24 of Daniel 9 it says, 
70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Let's stop right here. Here, Daniel is told that a certain time period has been decreed. First of all, the Hebrew word translated with weeks here literally means a unit of sevens, which could be a week. A week is a unit of sevens. It does not specify, however, what the sevens are. It can be days or years. From the context, it becomes clear that it is 70 weeks of years. This means a period of 490 years. We'll get back to the time element in a second. Now, first of all, it's of vital importance to note who this time is for. It says, for your people and your holy city. So, the angel Gabriel is telling Daniel here that the prophecy he was about to receive would concern his people, which would be the Jews, and his holy city, which is Jerusalem. So, this period, which we will see in a moment, is the 70th week of years, that is, the seven last years of a period of time of 490 years, does specifically concern Israel and Jerusalem. As we have also already seen in Jeremiah 30, it has nothing to do with a church who is not Israel. Anybody who argues that the church has to go through all or part of the tribulation hasn't even considered the basics of what this time period is for and what its purpose is. And more often than not, they do not distinguish between Israel and the church. As we see from the purpose of these 490 years, during it, atonement is made for iniquity. This happened when Jesus died on the cross. However, finish the transgression, make an end of sin, bring in everlasting righteousness, sealing up vision and prophecy, and anointing the most holy place hasn't happened yet. This is what is going to take place at the end of the final seven years. Then it's going to happen what is prophesied in Ezekiel 36. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. The prophecies regarding the millennium will be fulfilled and sealed up. The future millennial temple will be built and put into function. Another factor is the time element in this prophecy. Let's continue to read. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat even in times of distress. Then, after the sixty-two weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing, and the people of the Prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. As I mentioned before, 490 years are decreed over Israel and Jerusalem. This time span has a beginning and an end. But not only that, it also has a pause button. We are told that, that this whole period starts at a time when a decree is issued to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. This took place when, as per Nehemiah's request, King Artaxerxes issued the decree that Jerusalem should be restored and rebuilt. It took the Israelites seven sevens, that is, 49 years, to do so. From that moment on, another 434 years, that is, the 62 weeks of years, passed until Messiah the Prince, which is Jesus. Scholars have calculated the exact amount of years starting on the day of the decree and landed exactly on the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. They took into account all kinds of details like, for example, the fact that a prophetic year counts 360 days 
and not, as in our Gregorian calendar, 365 days. They also factored in leap years. In Galatians 4, verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son. There was a fullness of time for Jesus' incarnation, but also for the day of his entry into Jerusalem. In Luke 19, verse 42, we read what Jesus, when he approached Jerusalem, said, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. He then prophesies the destruction of Jerusalem and finishes by saying, Because you did not know the time of your visitation. The Pharisees who studied the scriptures all day long could have known that that was the exact prophesied day of Messiah the Prince, but they rejected him. Note, by the way, that Jesus is called here Messiah the Prince. This is not the Hebrew word for king. The people shout, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a quote from Psalm 118, verse 26. However, what is interesting is that in the original passage, it simply says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It does not say king. The people say it, though. It says that the Pharisees wanted Jesus to rebuke his disciples for calling him that. But he didn't do it. Rather, he said that if they should keep silent, stones would cry out. So yes, it is an interesting detail that in Daniel's prophecy about that day, Jesus is called Prince, not King. Although he was the King, of course, he did not take his throne on that day. He will, after the tribulation, when he comes with the church, he will be crowned with many kingly crowns and will establish his reign on earth as king during the millennium. We see this fact described in verse 26 where it says, The Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. This is the prophecy regarding Jesus' crucifixion, and this is speaking of what we saw just now, the fact that he did not yet take the office of king, and that the kingdom didn't start yet at his first coming. Now, the last of, of the week of seven years has not been fulfilled yet. This is where the stopwatch was set on pause. This pause still lasts until today. It has lasted for more than 2,000 years now. It is a pause of God's prophetic dealing with Israel. Israel is set aside, or, as it says in Romans 11, the natural branch is cut off. Not permanently, though. All the kingdom promises will be fulfilled at God's appointed time. In this pause regarding God's focus being mainly on Israel, the church came into, existent, uh, into existence and dominated this whole time. It is she who God uses to spread the gospel. Its existence was a mystery in the Old Testament and even during Jesus' ministry. Now, you might ask, what has all this got to do with the rapture? Everything. As I said before, the rapture is not an isolated random event with God simply deciding to snatch away the last generation of church-age believers and to finish this current age with a time of judgment for those left behind. No, the rapture must be seen in direct context to God's program with Israel. As I mentioned before, God either deals with Israel or the church but not the two simultaneously. So, as we have just read from the book of Daniel, all 70 weeks of years have got to do with Israel and Jerusalem. The last seven years will too. Since this is the case, and it clearly does not have to do with the church at all, the church must first be out of the way for these events to transpire. This is confirmed in Romans 11, where we read that the natural branch which is Israel, will be grafted back in. The 70th week marks the beginning of this taking place. It is the preparation period for them to be ready to receive their Messiah at the end. For the remnant, that is, 
which will only be a third of the Jews living then. Any view of the rapture that does not take into account the fact that the tribulation has got to do with Israel misses the point and does not at all understand the nature of the tribulation, respectively what it is about. As I mentioned before, the second group that will find itself in the tribulation are what Revelation 3 calls the earth dwellers. They are unbelievers who will be tested. They are not the church. The church is not Israel. No 70 weeks have been decreed over her. And she is not earthly, but heavenly. She does not need to be tested. She already has become obedient to the faith. Now, this is the main point one has got to understand with regard to the purpose of the tribulation. Anybody who does not consider this is disregarding the scriptural basis, will definitely misjudge this time period and grope in the dark when it comes to the church and its relation to it. Having established this fundamental basis, in the next videos we will have a look at other reasons why the church has nothing to do with Daniel's 70th week.